ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Total Extreme Wrestling. Today, we are booking post-WrestleMania. We've just had the big WrestleMania show. It is April 1st, three weeks away from Unforgiven, and we need to set, set some brand new storylines. We need to start fresh for our post-WrestleMania run. It will be the Raw after WrestleMania today as well. We're looking to maybe bring up a few different people from developmental here, call them up, and we'll start the plan there. So, today, obviously, new storylines, but also contracts are coming, new people galore. It is a bit of a fresh start. We really have to start new. We really have to kind of, you know, start beginning our own booking. Because the last, you know, whilst the series has began, we've kind of been sticking towards what's been happening in WWF at the same time. And now we're trying to start fresh and do our own thing. So that's the exciting thing. That's what we're looking to do. And hopefully we can get that done here today. But um, WrestleMania pretty successful. We had a good show. I'll show you that in a second. But you can see the popularity change is pretty decent with Steve Austin, the main one, up into the 90s. The Rock now moving into the main event as well. Triple H is doing very well for himself too. We'll show you WrestleMania. It was a 100 rated pay-per-view. Look, I don't really agree that it was 100 rated. I think we got a little bit lucky. 1.0 buy rate, 800,000 buys, 40,000 attendance, 100 rated show overall. You know, look, I'm happy, but I feel like we probably got a little bit lucky. The pre-show, sure Mark Henry won the Battle Royal for 55. We had um, Triple H and Owen Hart for the IC title. Triple H won the Intercontinental Championship. That was an 87-rated match. Brian Pillman beat Marty Jannetty for the lightweight title. That was 59. Sonny won a bikini contest. That was 66. Legion of Doom defeated Chainsaw and Cac Cactus, the British Brawlers, and the New Jacks, no, New Black Jacks, rather, for 78. That was actually surprisingly really good. The Rock and Farouk got 79. That was pretty good as well. The Rock beat him on that occasion. The Undertaker defeated Kane in a Hell in a Cell match, 89. I think that probably over-delivered as well. I'm pretty happy about that. So yeah, two good matches so far. Jeff Jarrett defeated Mark Merrill and Goldust for the European Championship. So Jeff Jarrett, the new champ, 72. Double J has been... His popularity is on the rise. He's doing good. Shamrock and Road Dog only hit 77. I was a little disappointed with that one. I was hoping that we could probably you know, get towards the uh, the 80 mark, but not quite. And the main event was Steve Austin winning the WWF Championship from Shawn Michaels, and that was 99 rated. Afterwards, though, McMahon came to the ring. You know, he's already ringside-ish. You know, he's seen crying in the ring. He couldn't believe that Austin's the champion of his company. Austin stunned him to close out the show and pose and, you know, the rest there. So, 100 rated show. You know, it might be the show of the year. I'll take it. I'm happy. But now the question is, can we back it up? Unforgiven is next, three weeks away. We've got to start some new storylines. Not going to be easy. Can we back it up? I sure as hell hope so. So with our developmental, developmental the best candidates to move up are probably um, Val Venus, Dan Severin, 81 Brawl, wow. Dan Severin, Val Venus, I want Edge and Christian as a package. I want them together, so I'm not going to say Edge. Christopher Daniels is probably ready. Absolutely. But, with Daniels, I mean, he's not going to be a top, he's not going to get the 70 pop. But he doesn't have to. So, I think I might call up Val Venus and Christopher Daniels. Dan Severin has a bit more improving he could do. Yeah, Edge, I just want Edge as a package deal, I feel. Daniels would be a great lightweight champion. That's what I'm thinking. I think Daniels would be a good opponent um, for Marty Jannetty. I mean, I was going to bring... Daniels is going to come in as a heel, so he probably won't be champion just yet, if, depending how long we give it to, to Pillman. Seth Rollins guy. Push Taker and Kane as a tag team. Have Paul as their manager. Well, that's the money, isn't it? That's, that's real good as a tag team, definitely. I always wonder why they didn't have Kane in the Ministry of Darkness. I thought that was always really strange. I think he would have been a perfect fit. Severin, Severin, um, like I said, a little bit more improving. He's got 47 pops, so he's got a ch good chance to actually get to the top. Good star quality, so he should actually do pretty well. But I like Val Venus. I think Val would be a good man to really push hard. And as we've kind of discussed, Val Venus would work pretty well with Mark Henry if we wanted to push him as a tag team and make Mark Henry more the sexual chocolate. This is the Raw after WrestleMania. Let's take a look at the results. We open up with D-Generation X. 
a 94 rated segment. X-Pac made his debut. DX coming out there. They're suffering from that big loss where they lost the championship to Steve Austin at WrestleMania. They talked about the future of the group and their future is X-Pac. He comes out and makes his debut. Very good rating for his gimmick. That's a good start. Good start to X-Pac's run. And I believe X-Pac is actually going to be a really good factor for the company. I think X-Pac, obviously a lightweight, could be a part of that. But also a really good factor in the European IC Championship scene. He could get his popularity around the 70 mark, I reckon. 94 for that segment. So a new member of DX revealed. Mark Henry squashed the Honky Tonk Man for 34. Henry 43, Honky Tonk Man 39. And Mark Henry... Uh, challenge The Rock to a match for 66. I think we'll do Henry and The Rock um, on the pay-per-view. Sonny and Val Venus made their debut together. Val Venus debuted with Sonny. They're seen kissing on the DOA's bike. So they're making out on the DOA's bike. And obviously, Chains, Skull, and 8-Ball, they figure out a little bit later on that that's happening, and they're not exactly thrilled. So, yeah, we'll do the turn. What was it? Oh, yeah, 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 all good. Above average for the ravishing gimmick and the turn. Ooh, really? We've done a lot of shock turns? I don't really recall doing that many. Okay. We've done a lot of long-term turns, I thought. Okay. And Val Venus, the gimmick change, below average. Too soon, apparently. We haven't even used it. We haven't even won appearance. So dumb. 71 anyways. My Gennetti beat Dick to go in a 60 rated in a three minute match getting 60. Okay, brilliant. I'm happy with that. Afterwards, he challenged Brian Pillman to a rematch. 52. Goldust to Mark Mero. They had a singles match for a 65. Goldust winning, basically taking Mark Mero's spot as the next guy in line for the European Championship. And another segment with Val and Sonny. DOA, they figure out where they are. They come and get them. But Val and Sonny, they manage to escape before they get harmed. So they manage to run away. Vince McMahon and Steve Austin are in the ring for a 100-rated segment. Vince McMahon trying to reason with Steve Austin, trying to figure out how they can solve their issues. And Steve Austin's having none of it. He doesn't care. He kind of poses with the championship. but basically kind of insinuating that he's going to make Vince's life a living hell. And the main event, Michael's in the main event against Shamrock. It's been a combination that's worked out so well in the past. We've gone back to it here again. We needed to have a strong main event to close things out. And I really wanted to have Shawn Michaels in a, in a match and get him a victory. So we've gone with that. Michaels picks up a win. Shamrock loses because of Road Dogg's interference, interferences. So that advances a couple segments there and, and hopefully improves the, uh, the heat as well. 94 for that match, and that gives us, well, hang on, one more segment. Steve Austin and Michaels have a stare down after that match as well. So Austin comes back out, has a stare down with Michaels. I think we had Austin on commentary before, so he was already there. And, um, yeah, so we had that there and uh, kind of setting up for the rematch here. So Michaels isn't done with Austin yet. He wants that belt back. 90 rated show for the Raw after WrestleMania. This shotgun Saturday night. Let's take a look at the results. Mark Henry and Aguilar on the pre-show. Henry 42, Aguilar 47. Henry picks up the win. Open up the show with Animal and Hawk cutting ties with Sonny. Basically announcing that uh, because of her behavior with Val Venus, they no longer want anything to do with her. They're done. And afterwards, we had the British Brawlers interrupt and challenge them to a match, kind of setting up for a match at the pay-per-view. Vader returns and he squashes Phineas Godwin. 77 for Vader, nice, 59 to rule. Too Much took on the Headbangers for 58. Taylor, 46. Chris for 60. Mosh, 52, 55 for uh, Thrasher. Nice. Val Venus hyped up his match with Chains, kind of challenging the leader there. Stunny helped Val Venus during this segment. Very good. So Val Venus had a good start. I'm happy with that. Good start. Val Venus then took on 8-Ball, 46-rated match. Venus, 44. That's really good. So Venus can go. Val can go. That's what we want. 8-Ball, 37. Sunny did some good, good work ringside. So Sunny, I think, was a good combination. I think that was a, a good decision. And 46 for that. 
Road Dog Billy Gun promo on Shamrock and Owen Hart, basically cutting a promo on the enemies of DX. And then they had a match against the Blackjacks for 73. Road Dog 72, Billy Gun 70, Wyndham 52, Bradshaw 59. Okay. Good match, 73, and the New Age Outlaws are back in action. It's been a while. Billy Gun's been out for a bit, so good to see them back. 72 overall for that show. It was from Puerto Rico. Okay, this is Raw as War in Japan. It's not going to be easy. Let's see the results. So we brought in Teo Kia to take on Owen Hart. 77 rated match. We just wanted a straight up wrestling match. See how the two go. Can we have a good match? That would be handy. So that was the idea there. And Kia 57. Not bad. And Owen Hart 81. Very good. 12 better match. Owen Hart won. Takamichi Noku cut a promo. Cutting one on Brian Pillman. Hyping up a match against Pillman for the lightweight title. The match itself. 67. Taka 73. Woo. 73 from Taka Michinoku, Pelman 50. Pelman had about 30 something pops, so that's fair enough. But uh, yeah, Taka very, very good. Um, and Taka Michinoku won because Brian Pelman got himself deliberately counted out. Will I really push Taka now? Well, Taka is probably a top five lightweight. We, we probably should look at pushing him. I mean, that was a very good performance. He did have the Japanese pop behind him. But very, very good. 67. Nice match. Akira Hakodu. Hakudu. We brought her in for a match. 41. She was 47. Nice. Ivory 19. Ivory had no pop in this area. I brought her in because we are looking at perhaps bringing in some Japanese women to bolster up the roster. Because we don't we don't have much many women at all. We kind of need some some Japanese girls. So I'm, I wanted to take a look at her, basically. Uh, we had Val Venus and Sunny teasing their new film which may star or involve chains in some way. So kind of maybe teasing that they made a film out of that uh, scene from last week on the bikes. 65 for that one. Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie. Oh, I forgot to kind of get rid of this segment. Cactus and Chainsaw were meant to uh, team up. I did have them as a team and I forgot to get rid of this segment. Which is them parting ways. But that's okay. We don't have to do the match. They can just part ways. You know. Gone. Done. That's it. Severin and Blackman had a match. 70. Severin. 70. Blackman. 49. Dan Severin. High popularity in this area. We brought him up from developmental for a match. See how he would go against Steve Blackman. And uh, very good. So Severin's another guy we, we would like to think about bringing him up soon. I'm not sure yet, but the thought's there. Certainly there at the moment. Uh, we had Kai and Tai out there kind of celebrating the fact that they're, they're home. They're back in Japan. Hallelujah. They're back. So a bit of a time waster. I think it might be the main event next. Yep, main event. Ooh. I really thought this would be better. Match length. Oh, man. I thought the match length would improve it and make it a brawl. Vader, 85. Michaels, 91. Hmm. Damn. All right. 81 for the match. I really thought we'd get better out of that. 77 for the show. So, yeah. Yeah. Tough. I think WCW will beat us this week. So still no news on Hogan, but we are in, in the lead, so I think it's all but confirmed we are going to get Hulk Hogan. Six-year deal. It's going to take him till he's 50. I don't know, man. I think there's no bigger way. There's no bigger way than to kick WCW up the backside than to steal Hulk Hogan from them. Like, he's their man. He's their marquee guy. And it'd be really interesting to see where WCW ends up without Hogan. If we bring in Hogan, he can do the special matches that we never got to see in this time period. And, you know, be done with him. We can always release him. We can always make his life hell that he wants to quit. So we don't have to pay him out. Probably the best idea. If Hogan keeps losing enough, he won't, he'll quit on his own. That's how you do it. Make Hogan quit. Quit. You drop him out. Make him quit. See you later. He doesn't have creative control. Alright. 
So vowels at the minimum, so a good start. So just another reminder, our subscriber goals are to get Mark Henry and Developmental Star. No, I haven't done every Roy outside the USA yet. We're going to start that now. We're going to start that now, if I remember. So we had a 25.56 TV rating. Still good. Like, we, we, we've lost 2 million viewers from last week, but still very... Or, million viewers. But still very good overall. WCW... No, they didn't get close. No, we smashed them again, so... D oh, whoa! A 100 rated... This is why... You use Bret Hart, for God's sake. Use the man. 100. 100. 100 rated match. Use him. What are you doing? DDP Bret Hart, 100. Are they going to push him now? You stole him from me. Can you please push him at least? Hogan took on Chavo, beat him for 82. Scott Hall took on Chris Jericho. Hey, he had a match against the world champ. I'll take that. 85. See? He can hang with Scott Hall. Piper and uh, Hoobertude, 75. 89 show. Wow. Hulk Hogan has decided that he wants to come back to the World Wrestling Federation. He's 44 years of age. 96. Popularity. He's the man. Bit old. But we fired the first major strike in the Monday Night Wars. The man, Hulk Hogan, is coming home. WCW's whole Hollywood Hulk Hogan has lived up to his name, starring in TriStar Pitch's latest sequel to the series, Three Ninjas High Noon at Mega Mountain, which hits theaters today. The Hulkster takes on the role of Dave Dragon and early reviews as uh, he nails the part. That looks like an absolutely dreadful movie. What is that? Is that a Three Ninjas High Noon? What the fuck? 2.8 on IMDb. Can we, can we, can we take that back? So Hulk Hogan's, mu hey, we got a, we got a bargain. Hulk Hogan's music, a movie, has allowed his popularity to, to rise up. Yeah, I don't want to listen to Hulk Hogan's music. Yeah, that's about it. His movie's getting his popularity up to 100. So we got a bit of a bargain. Hulk Hogan even more popular. So I'm going to bring back Hogan, and I'm going to have Vince McMahon manage him. And it's going to have Hogan and McMahon together once again to try and take down Steve Austin. I think that's a perfect storyline. I think that's a really... I love that storyline. I think that's going to work out really well. Let's take a look at the results of Shotgun Saturday Night. Mankind is back. He's back and he talks about his split up with Terry Funk and his recent struggles he's had in the WWF. 100 rated. What a freaking promo. Mankind is back. Back in full force. So, you know, we've, we've kind of done the bad on done the dirty on Cactus Jack for a bit. But now Mankind's back. Time to start pushing him. Mark Henry got another win over Honky Tonk Man. May as well just let him have another one over this guy. Another squash. Well, we saw Val Venus on the set of his new movie, Venus is Changed. Thanks to uh, Aaron Noor for that one. DOA stormed the set of this and proceeded to beat up Val Venus as Sunny watched on, screaming away. And maybe she was a bit naked, who knows? But uh, they're on set and DOA found him. Got the better at 62. So nice little start to this feud. The Rock beat D'Lo Brown for 75. The Rock got 78. D'Lo 51. Good match. Good match. Afterwards, The Rock accepted the challenge of Mark Henry. And they'll face each other on pay-per-view. So it's Mark Henry because, well, look. You know, we kind of need Henry to keep keep moving along. And in a good match, a bit of exposure against The Rock will uh, do him a world of good. And the main event was 75 rated. Jarrett, 76. Mero, 55. Goldust, 66, uh, 65. And Vader, 78. 75 overall for that match. That's a good main event. That's a good match. And 80 overall. That might be our best Saturday Night Shotgun to date. Very, very close. Let's take a look at the results of this week's Raw is War. We open up things with DX imitating Steve Austin. They're out there. Having a laugh at the expense of Steve 
Austin. So, Shawn Michaels is a bit more confident. He's got his smile back after a couple back-to-back -back victories. And this week, he's out there with the group making fun of Steve. 99. The Rock defeated Karma for 67. Nice match. The Rock for 67, Karma 46. Afterwards, Mark Henry. Whoa. Big segment. Mark Henry destroyed The Rock. So, Henry came out and he got him... He got him a piece of the rock, so he put him in the Hall of Pain, I suppose you could say. 88. Really good. Really good. Promo to hype up The Undertaker. 89. That was good. Michinoku and Dick Togo had a 58 rated match. Michinoku, 53. Togu, four, Togo, 47. Blackjacks and Los Barricas, 58 rated match. Wyndham, 52. Bradshaw, 55. Miguel, 44. Salvio, 51. 58. We gave Los Barricas the win, which led to Bradshaw finally. He's had enough. And that's it. He turns on. Do we not change his gimmick? That's all right. We can change his gimmick later. He turns on Bradshaw. On Wyndham. So Bradshaw turns on Wyndham. Attacked him and beat him down after the match. Val Venus had a promo hyping up a match against Chains in the future. And the main event was a pretty strong one. 83. Shamrock and Owen Hart teamed up to take on the Outlaws. Billy Gunn 65. Road Dog 71. That was better from Road Dog. Owen Hart 86. Shamrock 81. 83 overall for that match. For an 85 rated show in Canada. 10,000 attendants. 23.35, 17.5. So we're killing Nitro. DDP and Hulk Hogan had a 99 rated match. DDP beat Hulk Hogan and stole one of his popularity points. Of course he did. And DDP didn't even get it. He stole it, but oh, actually he might have. He might have. If you're watching on the YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you leave a like on it and subscribe to see more highlight videos coming away very, very soon.